Meine sehr geehrten Damen und Herren, Ladies and Gentlemen, welcome at Daimler Truck AG. My name is Uta Leitner, and I'm the head of global communication for trucks and buses. The place of today's event is Berlin. Why Berlin? Well, because we have to discuss a topical topic which is of political relevance and because we have several guests from Berlin here today. And of course, our program differs a bit from the standard due to the pandemic. Most of you are connected online today and only a few guests can be on site today. But no matter whether you're here in person or online, we are delighted that you are part of today's event. I'm also especially delighted to be able to welcome political representatives, Andreas Scheuer, the Federal Minister of Transport and Digital Infrastructure and member of the federal government. Welcome. Dr. Stefan Kaufmann, Innovation Officer of the Federal Government for Green Hydrogen. Welcome. And many other members of the German Parliament who are here with us today as well. Also as a representative of the automotive industry, Hildegard Müller, the president of the German Automotive Industry Association. And I would like to welcome as well our members of the board of Daimler Truck AG, Martin Daum, our CEO, and Sven Enners, our head of development, and Stefan Buchner, the head of Mercedes-Benz LKV uh, Trucks. So what can you expect specifically here today? Well, our subject is the CO2 neutral transport of the future. And in the beginning of the years, we have announced that hydrogen and the fuel cell will play a crucial role for us in that subject. And today we want to discuss how we can move along and forward together with politics. And we brought very specific news, news today. A world premiere is part of that. I think you can see it next to me here, but I will come back to that later. We will start with the speeches of Mr. Scheuer and our board members. And after that, we will have sufficient time for your questions. One note to our online guests. From now on, you can ask your questions for Martin Daum and Sven Ennest. Please use our event hub to do so, our digital platform. And of course, we would be pleased if your questions would um, turn around the subjects, transport transition, technology, and hydrogen. You have time until 1.45 p.m. And we will start with a Q&A after that. So let's go. Minister Scheuer, you have the floor. Welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, Carl Benz said 135 years ago, I'm not going to develop the horse, but I'm going to focus on technology and develop an engine. That's what he did. We are standing here today once again, and today we want to further develop this technology. We want to create uh, electricity. We want to focus on new energies. That will be the focus on the new decade in Europe. With these alternative fuels, we can and have to achieve our climate targets and create sustainable, climate-friendly mobility. We and I myself know that H2 is the most sensible solution for certain purposes. And H2 is A1 for that. Batteries can reach their limits, and that's where fuel cells take over. The classic electric motor is very limited when it comes to its range. But there are other alternatives. Hydrogen is suitable for 
long distances for large vehicles, but especially for trucks, buses, trains, and we are also discussing ship drives and the use in aviation. In short, hydrogen is a good alternative to diesel and it is a fu future fuel. I intentionally say it's just one fuel of the future, but if we are innovative, if we have new ideas, it might be the fuel for the future. What do I want to say with that? In my ministry, we pursue a certain strategy. We want to be open towards all energies. We want to be open to everything that can connect mobility. We therefore do quite a bit to make sure that with hydrogen and fuel sales, we can start a success story, and particularly a German success story. Today, Daimler is showing in a world premiere the first fuel cell truck. And I'm really excited to see it at such presentations. You know, you have these covers to raise um, the excitement, but we can assume that you know, we are not going to see the truck. You know, the visible perception is not going to be reinvented. But we are going to develop and invent another kind of truck. And the German automotive industry is creating enthusiasm and motivation for alternative drives. Mobility is not only marketing, but above all, it is innovation. Therefore, we are starting with a heavy-duty truck with hydrogen fuel cell drives in Germany. We are developing it in Germany and Daimler is facing this challenge. It is high time. Let me put it like this, because if I take a look at the European discussion alone, we face many tasks, not only in politics, but also in the economy. Hildegard Müller said at the so-called automotive summit that we are facing a challenge in mobility when she went to the chancery. Daimler wants to do a lot in the future. They want to achieve CO2 neutral transportation. That's a thing of the future. It's ambitious, but this is exactly what we need to do. Politics requests things and also promotes the economy. We have made money available from the funds of the mobility and fuel initiative of the government. This is our contribution. The federal ministry, however, has been following this path for quite some time. For over 10 years, we have backed hydrogen and 760 million euro have been invested in research and development in this field. And we have also generated the national hydrogen strategy. Mr. Kaufmann, he is the hydrogen officer of the federal government. He comes from a different ministry. He is allocated to a different ministry. But nevertheless, we think across the board and the federal government has decided on this strategy and it is equipped with quite a bit of money. The entire federal government is pushing this technology forward. This means we have to achieve a breakthrough. With this strategy, we create a precondition for the future of hydrogen and for innovation and investment. Altogether, we provide 800 and 9 million euro, 7 million for national and 2 million for international initiatives. A central field is the transport of goods and we can save millions of CO2, of tons of CO2. This is why we need a fast energy turnaround. Even before all these discussions about the corona pandemic, we decided upon that. By 2030, one third of the trucks should be run with renewable energy, either hydrogen or battery driven. 
And we also need to open up new perspectives. We should not only support the technology, but also have an investment on the purchasing price, the refueling infrastructure, and the infrastructure. We need to focus on all three. We need to focus on the vehicle, but we also have to invest up to 1.2 billion euro to bring this forward. We are going to make investment for trucks with alternative drives, and we are going to establish the refueling and um, charging infrastructure. And we are going to invest 4.1 billion euro for hydrogen refueling stations, both for trucks and passenger vehicles. We are also going to focus on the political framework to make sure that the differentiation of CO2-based tolls in transportation. This is a large package and it is quite an offer. This is not only a good outlook for manufacturers but also for suppliers. We also want to prepare Germany for the future. The automotive industry is in a difficult situation in a transformation process, and it has been greatly affected by the corona pandemic. However, we need to take the right decisions to get out of this crisis and achieve that with quite some momentum. We need innovation and enthusiasm for technology. This enthusiasm for technology has to be spread everywhere. Then the young generation can have a future in the automotive industry. That's our leading industry. And we can create prosperity for many people and their families because with this technology, we want to create new jobs. And with these transformation processes, we want to have a say outside Germany. So thank you very much for the invitation. And I hope that soon we will unveil the new truck so that we do not only meet in event area, but also on the road with hydrogen trucks. Thank you, Mr. Scheuer. Thank you, Mr. Scheuer, for your political perspective on the CO2 neutral transport of the future. Today, we are very consciously bringing together politics and economy. And that is why, Mr. Scheuer, we will now complement your perspective with the economic perspective. This is why I would like to now ask Mr. Daum, our CEO, to take the floor. Thank you. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Scheuer, Mrs. Müller. Actually, we should have met in Hanover. Uh, we would have had a similar event. The music would have been a little bit louder. Oh, sorry. It's uh, easier to speak without a mask. Um, so in Hanover, the music would have been a little bit louder. Uh, the chairs would have been closer to each other. But we absolutely wanted to come to Berlin. And why? Well, Mr. Scheuer, your speech already communicated it. We are bringing together the industry and politics. And that's absolutely necessary. The transition from a diesel-based transport economy to a CO2 neutral economy um, has three pillars which are connected to each other, like uh, multiplication. Uh, as we all remember from school, if in a multiplication one factor is zero, then the whole product is zero. And that's the same thing here. We have three factors. We need good products from industry because if we don't have those, we have a product uh, a factor of zero. We need a functioning infrastructure. If we don't have a functioning infrastructure, the product can be as good as it wants, but we have another zero and the result will be zero again. And we need our customers because all of our customers buy their vehicles, our vehicles, not because they want to have them, but because they need them. And if 
operating a CO2 free vehicle is more expensive than a diesel vehicle, then our customers can survive. Then they might uh, be able to buy a few vehicles, but they won't be able to change their fleet. And uh, even so, that is why we need those three pillars. And we would like today to focus on what we as Daimler can add to that, because if we don't have a good product, then all political efforts um, are in vain. So we need a good cooperation. But in my presentation, I would like to focus on what we can add in order to um, offer CO2 neutral and extra attractive vehicles. And that is why we decided on two technological paths, two parallel paths, electric, battery electric and fuel cells. Both types for me are electric trucks. Uh, only the source of energy is different. In one of them, we have uh, electricity stored in a battery. And for the other technology, it means that uh, the electricity is created within the car, produced within the car. And why two paths? Well, that's simple. If today you go to our production sites, you can see all different types of trucks. Uh, sometimes I'm asked what a truck costs, and then I ask back, what does a house cost? Well, a truck has a huge um, range. There is a huge range of different trucks and um, motors. And that is why we need two technologies. We already started in the past. In 2018, we started with the e -Citaro. Mr. Scheuer, you visited our expo stand back then. That was the first baby step back then. And today, it is a very important pillar in which we have a serious production and we deliver these electric trucks to many different cities in Europe. In 2019 and 2020, we had large increases in sales. In 2021, it will be even more than in 2020. And that's what we already know now. So this is a product which went from a prototype to large series production. In distribution transport, we work together with our daughter Fuso with the e -Canter. Um, for light distribution, transport, and then we have the e-Actras, which started customer testing in 2018. The results were great, and we will start series production next year for heavy um, short distance transport until 25 tons of payload of total weight. Sorry. Today we will focus on long-haul transport. And long-haul transport can be divided in two parts. A long-haul is something we can reach with batteries until 500 kilometers of range, lighter loads, um, simple drive profiles uh, without uphill routes, but mainly routes that can be planned. And we are currently working on a long-haul version of the e actress with um, a lot of batteries, which is not that easy because of the um, place constraints. We will start the series production 2024. And then we have the royal discipline, and that is today's highlight. And the sheets behind me will fall really soon. But before these sheets fall, the um, well, I will stop my speech now, and you can have a look at a short movie. This vehicle is called Gen H2 truck, generation hydrogen truck. Uh, depending on the terrain, depending on the form in which um, the hydrogen is stored, depending on the size of 
the tank, it has a range of 1,000 kilometers and more. And this means it fulfills all requirements in today's long haul transport. It's as performant as our customers expect. Today, you can see a concept study. And concept study is something that confirms that it's possible. We have all of the elements at our hands which make it possible. The next step is then um, building these vehicles, bring them into customer testing, learn a lot, we will modify a lot, we will find weaknesses. And what's very important is durability in our trucks. Our customers often ask why it always takes so long, but customer testing for us needs means at least one million kilometers and the trucks need to drive those kilometers because if we bring the vehicles to the market too early then we don't know how those vehicles will hold up and we always need two winters in the first winter stuff breaks in the second winter we can prove that this stuff has been fixed because our vehicles need to uh, run through many winters in their during their life cycle this is why from 2023, we will bring those vehicles to customer testing. And then in the second half of this, this decade, we will be able to produce in series. You might ask why that takes so long, but well, if this vehicle was ready today, we wouldn't be able to sell any of those. Rem just remember our mathematical um, formula. Well, uh, what good is a product for if we don't have an infrastructure? Well, infrastructure and industry, I think we always need a similar time frame in order to be ready. And this is why I think our time frame is fine. And that's also what's necessary in order to have a high value product in the end. The question is, where is the um, limit between battery and fuel cells? Sometimes we um, are a little bit ideologic there and we say either or, but uh, well, it's not always very clear and it also depends on many factors which aren't clear yet. Um, in general, you can say the lower the payload and the shorter the distance and the more planable the route, um, the more that speaks for battery. But the higher the payload, the higher the, the, ra uh, the distance and the less planable the route, um, the better the fuel cell is fit for the purpose. We brought another short film to make that clear, the difference between fuel cell and battery.
unser Gesamtportfolio. Our whole portfolio is larger than what you saw here in the film. We're uh, active worldwide in Japan and USA and Europe. Um, our customers have different applications like uh, collecting trash with iconic um, um, school buses in the USA. So we have many different trucks which are uh, adapted to our customers' requirements. And we try to um, have a large overlap in platforms so we don't have to reinvent the wheel for each car because um, for investments, all of this needs to go together. So we have a lot of similarities between battery electric vehicles and um, fuel cell vehicles in Japan, be it in Europe, be it in the US. And what we can say is that we already have sold 400 electric vehicles, uh, buses and trucks in everyday service. Um, that means vehicles which are not um, maintained by engineers. No, we sell the vehicles, we get the money and our customers are happy. And our customers are happy. We have over 100 customers with over 400 electric um, trucks and buses made by Daimler Trucks. And those um, have already run more than 70, 7 million kilometers in the last uh, two years. And they work great. And our customers are absolutely satisfied with them. Um, and driving is fun with those. Four weeks ago, I drove a 40 ton um, truck uphill, fully electrical, and that was a great feeling. So I'm looking forward, very much looking forward when we will be able to produce the vehicle in large series. It will be the same thing with fuel cell trucks because those essentially run electrically as well. And we have a lot to offer here. First, Daimler has a lot of know-how in the technology. I remember that in 1997, um, I um, were, I nearly changed, switched to the fuel cell um, project in Daimler Benz, um, but then I first went to Freightliner in the USA. But if I had become part of the fuel cell team back then, I would be talking about the fuel cell here as well. Who knows? So we've already been working on the fuel cell for quite a long time. We uh, met a lot of surprises. We had a lot of issues we couldn't foresee. Uh, for cold weather, we didn't know what happens uh, when cold water and hydrogen um, come together. And in these cases, uh, physical processes happen that are bad for those motors. So we solved a lot of these problems. We ran many millions of test kilometers in passenger cars as well as in trucks, especially in buses with these fuel cells. So today we can say that our fuel cell is ready. And as you can see, one of these uh, vehicles on the right side and one uh, of these fuel cells is installed in the truck next to me. So that's what the fuel cell looks like. But this fuel cell is not ready for series production yet because ready for series production is even one step further. Ready for series production means that the cost is uh, good, the quality is good. Um, well, series fit for series production means that it can run on the line without having uh, highly paid engineers taking care of each step. So that's what needs to work. Um, and the fuel cell production has one issue. It's very capital intensive. So you need high batch numbers in order to reduce the cost of the fuel cells. And that's why for us it was a breakthrough when in discussions with the Volvo Group we um, realized that they have the same issue. Yes, they also believe in the fuel cell for long haul and that they have a lot of sales. Um, they're just as uh, big as we are in North America and Europe. They were aware of needing larger batch numbers as well. So Volvo needed a working fuel cell. We need a, needed higher numbers. And this is why it was a logical step to work together. And that's why half a year ago, we um, founded the 
common company for uh, the development and production of fuel cell. That was a very successful start and we are absolutely behind that project. That means both Mercedes and Volvo will get the fuel cell from our fuel cell daughter company. I don't know what Volvo will do with the fuel cell. Um, Volvo doesn't know what we will do with the fuel cell. Um, so we will stay to be competitors, but we cooperate with these uh, large scale investments. And so that is why I'm very much looking forward to this uh, cooperation, this partnership. We also have Rolls Royce Power Corporation, who also need to switch from diesel to CO2 free um, fuel cell systems for stationary um, power generators. That will also help us reduce the cost. And both of these examples are proof of the readiness of the technology. And that also means that we are ready to um, invest and to meet results very soon. What's very important here is a cooperation with politics. So first, I would like to thank you for all of the support in the past that helped us um, creating this vehicle. And also, I would like to thank the federal government for its clear support of the hydrogen strategy and its com and, and their commitment. Because it's true, we need to set strong impulses. It's about infrastructure. It's about getting this second pillar ready because, um, well, we are committed, you are committed, and the oil and gas industry is committed as well to continue on that path. We need to take um, fundamental decisions and decisions which are difficult to be revised. And that's why we need to closely cooperate. And that's why I welcome the invitation which we got from your national, offen um, your na national uh, hydrogen strategy. We are sparing partners. Sometimes that's um, nice, sometimes not so nice, but we are ready as a sparing partner. And we have the market behind us, which is important for that. There are three critical priorities in which we need to communicate clear information for the market very soon. First, it always only works with green hydrogen, not with gray hydrogen. Gray hydrogen means uh, using coal in order to generate energy to make uh, hydrogen from it and uh, um, charge batteries with that. Same problem with batteries which are charged with uh, fossil fuel that would uh, create even more CO2 emissions. I don't need any NGO or uh, I don't need the press to tell me that. Um, but if we have green electricity, and that's why this component is just as important, in this case we need green hydrogen. and if we can create um, green electricity and green hydrogen, then those vehicles are a core part in um, fulfilling the Paris Agreement. So that's why it's important to have green hydrogen. Second, we need to promote the hydrogen infrastructure. We need to promote uh, it in the same way as we're promoting a charging infrastructure. We're convinced that um, uh, fossil fuels won't bring us into a fossil fuel, uh, a CO2 free future because uh, the economic, um, um, the work that is necessary is difficult enough. We can't build up two parallel infrastructure. And the second thing about cost parity, even if I'm very optimistic, the material cost of this vehicle in the future, even if I'm take the most optimistic uh, hypothesis of the development of hydrogen prices in the future, still a hydrogen and battery electric vehicle is still more expensive to operate than a diesel vehicle. And that is why all of our customers still use diesel vehicles. And that is why we need to find a way to operate and to 
uh, create benefits for operating green vehicles. Um, and that is why we have a perfect example here in the hydrogen strategy how we can uh, realize uh, of green politics as, as quickly as possible. We need a CO2 based um, road tax, and that is how we can create a counterweight to the cost of uh, the additional cost of the new technologies. Of course, we can't do this on the national level alone. Uh, and that's not easy for you, Mr. Scheuer. It's already difficult enough to uh, implement that in Europe, but it's in, in Germany, but it's even more uh, difficult to implement it in Europe. So we know how difficult it is, but in the trucks business, we need a strategy on a European level. Um, transport vehicle, this industry is too small for a national strategy, and that's why we need a European solution. And that is why I hope for the German government during uh, its presidency of the European Council, together with the European Green Deal, sets the standard, the benchmark for Europe, and we are ready to support that uh, with a clear commitment for Europe and a clear commitment for our, through our product policy. Together, we will make this CO2 neutral transport a success. When I saw this slide for the first time, it said, together we can make it a success. But I said, it's too much can, um, because I'm convinced that there's a commitment and will from politics, a commitment from us as an industry, and that's why we um, pronounce that as a factum. Together, we will make it a success. Thank you, Mr. Scheuer, for your support. And concerning the details um, of the trucks, because we don't only want to present a truck, but also in the technology, I would like to give the floor to my colleague Sven. And Ernest. Thank you, Martin Daum. Ladies and gentlemen, I would also like to welcome you here. Those of you who don't know me yet, my name is Sven Ennest. I'm the head of development of the board of management of Daimler Truck AG, and I would like to present the technical concept of Mercedes-Benz Gen H2 truck. You can see the design. It stands for the future of transport to turn a uh, truck more and more into CO2 natural uh, neutral vehicles. We are betting on both battery and s fuel cell. Only if we use both drive types can we actually cover both applications of our customers. The Gen H2 truck is a major milestone on this path. It forms the basis of the series production vehicle that we are going to bring into large series production in the second half of the decade. Customer testing will already start in 2023. Our claim is to have a fuel cell truck with hydrogen as an energy source and that energy that truck should meet the expectations of our customers regarding traction, range, and power. The Gen H truck is designed like today's diesel truck with a gross weight of 40 tons and a payload of 25. The energy source is hydrogen, either as a liquid or a gaseous um, hydrogen. We focus on liquid hydrogen because only with liquid hydrogen can our customers reach a range of 1,000 kilometers with just one tank load. And refueling is as fast as with today's diesel trucks. Liquid hydrogen enables us to have smaller and lighter tanks and that therefore enlarge the cargo space and the payload. We are absolutely convinced that with respect to Europe in 2030, we will have far more cost-efficient paths 
regarding the infrastructure. So liquid hydrogen has lots of advantages for all the players. This is why we pursue the following approach. On board of the concept truck, there are two liquid hydrogen tanks of stainless steel with 40 kilograms of capacity each. The tanks are a real high-tech component. They are vacuum insulated and keep the hydrogen at a temperature of minus 253 degrees Celsius. That's only 20 degrees above the absolute zero point. To turn liquid hydrogen into energy, it needs to be heated. Then it flows in a gaseous state into the fuel cell system. And we should take a closer look at that. So let's go over there. The fuel cell system is the heart of the Gen H2 truck. And regarding the size and the positioning in the truck, it is comparable to today's diesel engine. An electrochemical reaction creates electricity for the drive of the vehicle. The hydrogen is divided into protons and electrons and together with oxygen, electric energy is created and the only emission of the truck is steam. Our Gen H2 truck has 300 kilowatts and therefore a very powerful and efficient fuel cell system. With this system, we want to set the benchmark in our industry. The modular system consists of two 150 kilowatt units with two fuel cell stacks of 200 cells each. We have invested more than 20 years of experience in this fuel cell technology, as is the case in heavy duty, long haul transportation, efficiency and durability of vital importance. We meet these requirements on the basis of the perfect symbiosis of the second in de um, decisive component of the battery strategy of the Gen H2 two truck, the high voltage battery. The battery is located between the two tanks and the battery has a capa capacity of 70 kilowatt hours and an average performance of 400 kilowatts. It supports the dynamic drive of the truck that needs a lot of power. For example, a fully loaded a truck going uphill or in overtaking maneuvers. This allows the fuel cell to operate constantly without any performance fluctuations and this increases efficiency and du durability. The drive of the vehicle depends on the requirement, but it is operated both on the basis of the fuel cell and the battery. If the fuel cell cannot generate enough energy, then the battery supplies it. If it's the other way around, then the surplus energy is saved in the battery. In addition to that, we also charge batteries with the help of recuperation. That is the use of the brake energy. This intelligent drive strategy allows us to operate the fuel cell and the battery in a high efficient drive with an e-axel with 230 kilowatts continuous power and 330 kilowatts peak power. The e-axel forms part of the global electric drivetrain family and like this we can make it available to the customer at a global level. So we have gone through the energy flow from the tank to the electric drive axel. To make this work efficiently we need intelligent controls of the energy flow and we will find that behind the driver's cap. This is where the control center for the control of the energy flux is located. We also need a high performance cooling system, an important system for a fuel cell truck because it needs a lot more cooling power than a standard diesel truck because the fuel cell needs to be kept at an ideal operating temperature. So this is highly complex technology. To make all this possible, we combine our comprehensive know-how in fuel cell technology with our decades of experience of heavy-duty long-haul trucks. Ladies and gentlemen, 
we as Daimler Trucks have founded the modern transport industry with our vehicles more than 120 years ago. With the Gen H2 truck, we are developing a hydrogen-based fuel cell truck for our customers. This is nothing less than the beginning of a new era, a totally new generation of trucks for CO2 neutral transportation in flexible and demanding long-haul transportation because the high demands of our customers regarding performance, durability, reliability, safety and efficiency are met. Thank you very much. And I will hand over to Uta Leitner. Thank you, Sven Ennis, for the technical details concerning the vehicle. I think you could explain uh, the technology a little bit further, and that's what we will do right afterwards. So once again, Mr. Scheuer, thank you for being here today. I know you will have to go back to the ministry on time, but before you leave, we will have a short brief time for a photo up next to the truck. So Mr. Scheuer and Mr. Daum, please come here to the truck.